to welcome everybody here today and it's absolutely wonderful to see you here today and to be here with you today and we pray that this may indeed be a day of real blessing. Jesus is with us. Jesus is within us. <coughs> and Jesus desires to bless you. There are blessings for you here this day. Jesus desires to bring blessing into your life this day. It's possible that you have come here today with some form of burdens in your life. For some of you, the burden might consist of decisions that you're having to make yourself or where you find yourself in life at this stage. So if there's a burden in your heart connected with where you are in life, decisions you have to make, I invite you now to bring the pain of it, the frustration of it, the heaviness of it, to bring it to Jesus. Seek to make a real surrender to Jesus this very moment. The pain, the upset, the frustration, the annoyance. Even we'll seek to surrender to the Lord Jesus the annoyance of that car that was uh, put in the front of our driveway. But whatever, but whatever it is, we'll, we'll seek to bring to the Lord anything that constitutes annoyance. And the grace, Lord, to surrender. Lord Jesus, we surrender everything to you. And we thank you, Lord, that we do not have to handle anything alone. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are with us right now. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are going to be with us every moment into the future. That you will be within us. That you will go before us. That you will lead us into your path, into your plan for our life. And we pray, Lord, I pray as we surrender everything to you. That the power of your Holy Spirit may touch our people here this day. That a current of love from the Holy Spirit may at this moment be going to those who most need it. Right now, Lord Jesus, a current of love from your Holy Spirit to go right through us, to set us free and to give us the grace to trust that you are with us. For some of you, the burden you have come here with today could be concerned about family members. Perhaps there's some member of your family who is not living the way you would like. Could be your spouse, could be your brother, your sister, it could be a son or a daughter or grandchildren. Perhaps there are difficulties there within your family of one sort or another. Spiritual difficulties, moral difficulties, relationship difficulties. And I invite you now, bring the pain of it. Bring the frustration of it. Bring whatever distress or upset it is causing you at this moment to Jesus. That person who seems to have turned their back on God. That person who won't speak. That person who has, a, who has an addiction, a drink problem, a drugs problem. A relationship problem, whatever the problem is. And Lord Jesus, we bring to you the pain that we are experiencing because of this family member. We bring you the pain, we bring you the upset and we entrust this person, Lord Jesus, into your hands. We thank you that you love this person far more than we do. Yet you love this person with an infinite love. And Lord, Sometimes we can be impatient. We pray, Lord, for your patience. That however annoying or upsetting or frustrating the situation may be. Welcome. You're okay. You're wonderful. You're welcome. That however frustrating or upsetting the situation may be, 
Lord, that we will have patience, that I will have patience in dealing with that situation. <clears throat> that instead of getting upset and annoyed, Lord, the grace to handle that situation your way, to, to cope with whatever the problems are that are arising your way, Lord Jesus. And I also invite you to bring any upset or, the, or heaviness you may be feeling because of problems in the wider community or problems within the church itself. I'm sure many of you um, are delighted with your local priest and delighted with your local bishop and delighted with our Pope. And uh, perhaps there's others who are not quite so delighted with somebody up along the line. So if there's some heaviness in your heart, if it has become a burden for you, if the problems that are in the local church or in the general church, the wider church, have become a burden for you, I invite you now, it's Jesus' church. It's not my church. It's not your church. It's the church of Jesus Christ. And in the creed we always say, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. It is the church of Jesus Christ. <coughs> and there can be problems that are bigger than what we can deal with. And we pray, Lord, for the grace to surrender them to you. Lord Jesus, it is your church. But Lord, some things grieve us. Some things really grieve us, Lord Jesus, because it appears as if some of the people who should be given the greatest leadership are not always given the greatest leadership. And we pray for them. We pray for renewal in our church that will begin with you being truly established as Lord and Saviour. And it being recognised that your teaching is the true word of God. And we praise you Lord Jesus and bless you that, that you will in your time. That you will find a way forward to deal with all the problems within our church. And then if there's anything else that's a burden for you. I just invite you now if there's any other burden in your heart this day. Just bring it to Jesus. It could be a physical ailment, a sickness, could be financial problems, whatever. Just bring it, bring it to Jesus. And anything that's a burden as we seek to become open to the power and the presence of Jesus here today. And I'll share a couple of thoughts with you before I go into the next section of our healing ceremony today. Uh, greetings, by the way, to the readers of the Curate's Diary here today. And indeed, if there's any ex-readers of the Curate's Diary here today, you're welcome also. But uh, greetings. <coughs> and um, uh, those of you who have been reading it over the past year will know that I did a series on angels back at the beginning of last year, around this time last year. And as a result of that, I had written away to various bookshops to get books on angels, books on Christian angels, that is. And I had ordered four copies of Hope Price's book um, on angels, on Christian angels, from one particular bookshop. And guess what they sent me? They sent me three copies of Hope Price's book and a copy of a book that was 100% New Age. Uh, New Age Angels. I wrote about that in the diary as well. But as well as God's angels, there are the counterfeit angels. And now reading it was a revelation. It's not a book I would have planned to have got, but I'm glad that I got it, to just see what is out there. It was a revelation. Because what I, I did know that there were the counterfeit angels as well as the true angels, but what I did not know was that in the New Age, they also had their own Jesus and their own Holy Spirit. More than one Jesus Christ. The New Age people have their own Jesus Christ. And there's quite a difference between their Jesus Christ and our Jesus Christ. And they have their own Holy Spirit, as they call them. Uh, an entity um, that's taken the name the Holy Spirit. But there's quite a difference between their Holy Spirit and uh, our Holy Spirit. 
And then this year, over Christmas, I got in a new stock of books for in there. I got one not knowing what was in it. I usually, when I get books, I look into them. And one particular book I got this year was A Twist of Fate, written about 20 years ago. Um, this lady, Berit, whatever her name is, she was writing about how the New Age movement had got into the um, feminism, how the New Age movement had sort of taken over feminism from within. Now, in the New Age, there are two elements. There are New Age practices, and there's a New Age, what you might call spirituality. And as I read her book, and she's not a Catholic, she's a Lutheran, and it was written 20 years ago. And so many of the th things that she identified as being part of New Age spirituality 20 years ago, I was amazed at the extent to which they're in our church, in the Catholic Church today. In the last number of years, in, in one way or another, they have crept into our Catholic Church. And so uh, the thoughts I'm going to put you put here before going further in the healing ceremony today is to what extent is your Jesus, the true Jesus, the Son of God, or to what extent is it a New Age Jesus? Because the New Age Jesus has a whole different set of teachings to Jesus, the Son of God. And Many of the, the teachings of the New Age concerning God, concerning spirituality, they have crept right into our church. And they're influencing the thinking within our church itself. And so today I'm going to take a couple of gospel passages and we'll reflect on what Jesus said and we reflect on what the New Age Jesus might have said to the same people in those Gospel passages. Do you remember the gentleman who came to see Jesus during the night? Anybody else tell me who his name was? Nicodemus. Nicodemus, of course. And Nicodemus was a leading Pharisee. So he was a deeply spiritual man. Perhaps better at prayer than we are. And he came to Jesus. And what did Jesus say to him? Did Jesus just congratulate him on how good a man he was and how deep a faith he had? No. Jesus said to him, Unless you are born again of water and the Holy Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So here was a deeply religious person. And Jesus challenged him. That, by the way, is one of the key differences between Jesus, the Son of God, and the New Age Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, loves us so much that he will challenge us to do better. The New Age Jesus will tend to encourage us to go in the path we're already going, only go a little further in it. The New Age Jesus is a very tolerant Jesus. Whereas the Jesus, the Son of God, is a very challenging Jesus. So Jesus, the Son of God, said to Nicodemus, I'm sorry, you must be born again. You're very religious, but you have to be transformed from within. Now, what might the New Age Jesus have said to him if he had been there? The New Age Jesus would probably say to him, Ah, man, will you loosen up a little bit? You don't have to be taking things so seriously. And by the way, sure, all religions, they're all a path to God. You're okay the way you're going, just loosen up a little bit. Let's take another situation. Remember the man that came to Jesus, the, the, wealthy, the wealthy young man who came to Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He looked at him and he said... Sorry, if you're to be my disciple, you're going to have to sell what you have and give to the poor. Incidentally, that was a particular instruction for a particular person. It doesn't mean that we all have to sell everything we have and to, to give it all away, but rather it was an instruction for a particular person to go and sell what you have and give the money to the poor and then come follow me. 
Now what might in your age Jesus have said to the, that man? He would have likely said to him, Ah, oh, you're doing well. Riches are a blessing from God. Enjoy it. Then, remember the woman that was caught in adultery. Now just one little word about that particular gospel passage in John. It's a sort of a late addition to John's gospel. It's not in the earlier versions of John's gospel. But it's quite possible that there, was, there were other writings back then as well. So it is quite possible that it goes, it's a genuine story about Jesus and this particular woman and the whole situation. It's possible. But it's not, you can't be as sure of it as you could be with other parts of John's Gospel. But anyway, let's take it that it is the genuine of what happened with Jesus. And that Jesus, after he had written in the ground, after he had caused the people who were accusing the woman to turn away, uh, let him who is without sin cast the first stone, Jesus said to her, Go in peace, but... What did he say? Go in peace, but sin no more. Now, what would the New Age Jesus have said to her? Possibly something like this. Oh, thank God them old hypocrites are gone. And be free in the spirit, woman. Feel free in the spirit. Have you ever heard that phrase? I've heard it on a couple of occasions being used where it shouldn't have been used. To feel free in the spirit. In other words, to keep on living as you have been living. The true Jesus, the Son of God said, Go in peace, but sin no more. And then we'll take another uh, situation. <coughs> Remember the man that came to Jesus and said to Jesus, I will follow you, sir, but first let me go home and say goodbye to my people at home. Now what did Jesus say to him? Once the hand, once the hand is laid to the plough, no one who looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, again, Jesus challenged him. We don't know the particular situation. Perhaps Jesus realised or thought that a man wasn't sincere at all. Or perhaps uh, Jesus realised that if the man went home, he'd never come back. But whatever Jesus challenged him. Once the hand is laid to the plough, no one who looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Welcome. Make yourself at home there. And wonderful to see you. But um, what would the new age Jesus likely have said? <coughs> ah, go ahead. And you can take your time. There's no hurry. It's not most likely what the new age Jesus would have said. So I'm going to ask you now to reflect on the past year and to ask yourself, which Jesus have you been listening to? Have you been listening to Jesus, the true Son of God? Or have you been listening to spirituality that came from the New Age Jesus? Remember again that Jesus, the true Son of God, challenges us. To walk in God's ways. The other Jesus, the counterfeit Jesus, tells us, oh, it's okay. You can relax. Go your own way. So I'll invite you now to just reflect on the past year. Were there any times during the past year when you listened to the counterfeit Jesus instead of listening to Jesus, the true Son of God? Did you step outside God's will in any way during the past year? And incidentally, because I'm recording this and because I plan to upload it onto YouTube, I'm speaking to a broader audience than maybe here today. So I may say some things that would have no relevance whatsoever to people here today, but could be relevant to somebody watching it. But anyway, I just invite you to reflect on the past year. Firstly, did you make any major stepping outside God's will? And the temptation is there at all times for us to step outside God's will. In most people's lives, in most priests' lives, first of all, 
in my life and in the life of many priests, most priests, and likewise in the lives of many married people and indeed many single people, a time will come when you will be tempted to seriously step outside God's will. And it may seem the attractive thing to do. It may seem the right thing to do. And the consequences could be quite disastrous, not just for yourself, but for your family, if you're married, or if you're a priest, for your community, uh, could have disastrous consequences. Indeed, sometimes where a person breaks their marriage vows, it could lead to their children being hurt, and their children then growing up hurt, end up with problems themselves, problems in their marriages themselves, and that gets passed on to their children, and the problem could keep being passed on for hundreds of years. It's quite likely that there will be some people in 200 years' time who will be suffering as a result of the, of the mistakes the stepping outside of God's will that our parents made in the past year. And so I just invite you to reflect on the past year and did you in any way step outside of God's plan for your life? The good news is that our God is a redeeming God. He desires to redeem. It's not too late yet, most likely. That even if during the past year you stepped outside God's plan for your life, I invite you now to bring it before Jesus. Whether it was big or small, to bring it before Jesus. Jesus who is outside of time. Jesus who can go back with you to that moment when you are stepping outside his plan. And it could be something small. It could be a falling out with somebody. It could be an argument, a row. But to bring it. And now as you bring that situation to Jesus who is within you. To make a real surrender of it to Jesus. And glimpsing yourself being able to do better. Glimpsing yourself if that situation was to be repeated, that this time you would be able to walk in God's plan for your life. But also glimpse the fact that Jesus is a redeeming God. Jesus desires, if it's possible at all, for to redeem that situation, to redeem the mistakes that were made. And to enable you to bring reparation, to repair the situation. And so I just invite you to think of the relationship, think of the situation, think of whatever it was. And now you can see yourself receiving the strength from Jesus to walk in God's ways. And to seek with his help to bring blessing, to bring healing. The past year is not so long ago, even if a person has made a big, big mistake. The past year is not so long ago. The chances are that if you take the right steps now, it will be possible for you to redeem that situation with God's help. The good news is, that while our God is a challenging God, he is also the God who gives strength. The counterfeit God, the, the God of the new age, very tolerant God, but his ability to give strength is very limited. And so the good news is that whatever mistakes have been made, just bring it now to the Lord. Bring the entire situation to Jesus and trust and trust that he will give you the strength to do what is right, to walk in his ways.
Um, uh, perhaps it was just um, an error of judgment at a time, a reaction to some upsetting situation, and the same applies. If there were situations that arose during the past year that caused you upset and you ended up lashing out, handling them the wrong way, the same applies. Jesus is now present to what happened six months ago. Jesus is now present to what happened a year ago. And so, with Jesus, you can bring it to him right at this moment. He is within you. He goes before you. I invite you to bring to Jesus whatever it was. And now, becoming aware of the presence of Jesus within you and before you, becoming aware of power coming from Jesus who is within you and who goes before you, I'll invite you to, de to declare after me, thank you, Jesus, that with your help I can handle this together. Thank you, Jesus, that with your help I will handle this. Thank you, Jesus, that with your help I can handle this. Thank you, Jesus, that with your help I can handle this. Another passage that shows us the difference between Jesus, the Son of God, and the New Age counterfeit. We find it in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. Jesus, the Son of God, said, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and many take that road. But the gate is narrow and small. Sorry. But the gate is small and the path is narrow that leads to life, and only a few find it. Now most people, when they hear that passage, what do they think about in the first place? They think about that it relates solely to heaven, isn't that right? Um, at least that's the way it's often interpreted. That the way to heaven is narrow and the way to the other place is broad. In fact, when you look at the passage, Jesus isn't just talking about heaven, though that comes into it. He's talking about here and now. The path to real life, here and now. The path to a relationship with Jesus that will transform your life, here and now. It involves making hard choices. It involves loving God so much that you will seek to do th things his way. Whereas the New Age Jesus, the path is broad that leads to destruction. Now what does the New Age Jesus so often say to people today? Ah, oh, there's no such place as hell. Or if there is, nobody is going there. Relax. It's all, everybody's going to end up in the same place anyway. Did you ever hear that message is sort of in one way or another? The way is broad. That is the message that's out there today. It's all going to be all right. But that is not the challenging message of Jesus, the true Son of God. But the good news is that for those who take the narrow road, it leads to life. Happiness, blessing, serenity. Whereas the other road, which appears very nice, which many, many people are taking, it leads to all sorts of problems. And so I invite you now again to think of your life during the past year and to think of where you're situated as you face into the new year. And just to bring to Jesus any temptation you're experiencing to take the broad road. Let us hold before Jesus where we stand in life. And we pray for the grace to so love God that in all things we will seek to do his will. Do you love God? How many people here today love God? Could have a show of hands on that? We all love God, isn't that right? And praise God, praise God. Do you love God enough to seek to do things his way? Yes? yes? Praise God. 
Now, if you're struggling with some form of compulsion, but I'm conscious that I'm speaking to a wider audience, that there may be people watching on YouTube who will have moral problems of one sort or another. If you have a compulsion, suppose, for example, you have a compulsion to watch pornography. Do you love God enough that for the next 24 hours you're going to starve this particular compulsion. Again, here we see the difference between what the Jesus, the Son of God, is saying and what the New Age Jesus is saying. Jesus, the Son of God, is saying to you, pornography is not of God. The New Age Jesus is saying to you, a little bit of it will do you no harm. Might even do you good. That's what the New Age Jesus says. But I'm holding before you the challenge of Jesus, the Son of God. Do you love God enough if you have such a compulsion or whatever other compulsion you may have, whatever other inclination you may have that is not of God? It could be to drink. It could be to get all annoyed about different things, to get all bothered. It could be to worry, whatever it is, overeating, whatever it is. Do you love God enough that for the next 24 hours that you're going to so love God that you will starve this inclination? And we pray, Lord, for those who are making that decision, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that the power of your Holy Spirit may enter into them. That the power of your Holy Spirit may touch them deeply. The grace, Lord, to always love, so love you. That we will seek to do things your way. And become unconscious of the situations where we get flustered or upset or annoyed or frustrated, whatever it is. And the situations where we end up losing the run of ourselves or lashing out. And again, Lord Jesus, praying for the grace to so love you, to so love you, that when something happens that annoys us, that our first reaction will be to respond, to surrender it to you. That our first reaction, Lord Jesus, when something annoys us, is to surrender it into your hands and to become aware of your presence within us and to have peace in our hearts. We pray, Lord Jesus, for anybody who is going through a time of struggle, spiritual struggle or moral struggle, we thank you that you love them. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that you will set them free. Even at this moment, Lord Jesus, let the power of your Holy Spirit come right within them at this very moment. Deliver us, Lord. Let the power of your Holy Spirit come within each of us at this moment. We desire to be delivered. We desire to walk in your ways. We desire to walk within the fullness of your plan for our lives. We hold before you our home situation and our, plan, our family situation. And our work situation. The grace, Lord Jesus, that in the different situations in life, that we will walk with you. That we will so love you. That we will do things your way. And we hold before you our families Lord Jesus. The grace to help our families to grow and to love you. To know and love you. We pray Lord Jesus. As we enter the new year for your protection. If there's somebody vulnerable within your family. I invite you to hold that person now before the Lord. And we just pray, Lord, for your blessing, for your protection, to surround that family member. Lord, protect that person even if it's from themselves. 
but protection, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will send people in their path who will lead them in the right direction instead of leading them in the wrong direction. The grace of your blessing, Lord Jesus, your protection for our homes, for our families, for the coming year. And we hold before you, Lord Jesus, the particular needs of our family at this time. We pray, Lord, your protection, your blessing. And for ourselves, Lord Jesus, the grace of openness to your will. Lord, if we're ever stepping outside your plan for our lives, we give you full permission to block us and give us, we pray for the grace that you will help us to see that you are blocking us. Lord Jesus, we desire to do your will. We desire to be guided by you. We give you full permission to block us if we're stepping to the right or to the left of your plan for us. And we pray, Lord Jesus, to be your presence within our own families. How we would love, Lord Jesus, to help our family members to come to know and love you. And Lord, if we can't do it, then send somebody else along who will be able to do it. If they won't listen to us, Lord Jesus, and that often happens, doesn't it, that the last person a person will listen to is their own family members. Well, so we pray that we might be able to help somebody else's family and that you, Lord, will send somebody else to help our family members. And whatever special intention each of us have for the coming year, we pray, Lord, your blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you, right now, the Lord, the God of creation, are within each of us. And not just right now, but that you are going to be within us for as long as our hearts are open to you for the rest of our lives. Isn't that awesome? Each of us have God living within us. We unite, Lord Jesus, with your death made present in the Mass. And we offer up our Mass, our Holy Communion, in intercession for those who do not know you. For those who do not love you. And for our own families, Lord Jesus. As we face into the new year, we pray, Lord Jesus, for your blessing and protection to surround every member of our families. And we pray for the grace, Lord Jesus, to respond to your prompting. And to do everything that's in our power during the coming year. To help our loved ones and family members to come to know you and to love you. Lord, we desire to lead people to you. We ask you to anoint our efforts. O oh, Holy Spirit, guide us and direct us during this coming year. Lord Jesus, to lead a person to you would be more wonderful than winning an Olympic medal. And we pray, Lord, for that grace. We also hold before you, Lord Jesus, anybody into whose life we brought hurt. Lord, as we pray for healing for ourselves, we pray especially for healing for anybody that we have ever hurt or let down. We pray, Lord, for God's cottage here, for its full development and the Bible chapel, their full development. And we also ask your blessing, Lord Jesus, upon all the kind donors, the generous donors who made God's cottage and the Bible chapel possible. We pray you to bless them. And we pray, Lord, your protection to safeguard and protect each of us, our homes, families, loved ones, helpers and all of our cars, from all serious danger, accidents and evil, and also our protection against cancer and other serious illnesses and alcoholism, suicidal desires and depression, and your blessing upon those of our people suffering from them, and your blessing upon those who have the care of people suffering from them. 
And just thinking now of whoever it is, we most desire you to bless Lord Jesus. Whoever it is that we feel really needs a touch of your love, as we join together to offer a little prayer to your sacred heart. May your sacred heart, Lord Jesus, be praised, glorified and honoured throughout the whole world, now and forevermore. May your sacred heart, Lord Jesus, be praised, glorified and honoured throughout the whole world, now and forevermore. May your sacred heart, Lord Jesus, be praised, glorified and honoured throughout the whole world, now and forevermore. Amen. The Mass for Healing in February will be on the first Wednesday as usual, and again, I think on the first Wednesday of March. Then on the 17th of March, we'll have another afternoon here, um, in commemoration of the opening of God's Cottage. We always have it on the 17th of March, because it opened on the 17th of March. So do tell your friends if you liked what you experienced today. At the Bible Chapel, where we've been slowed down a little bit, with the roof and the walls up, and yet there was three months of rain there. And uh, it prevented the place from drying out. So when it didn't dry out, the, even the electrics couldn't be put in, uh, the painting couldn't go ahead, uh, the tiles couldn't be put down. So we're a little bit delayed, and we're uh, sort of aiming now for the end of March, uh, beginning of April, to have an official opening for it. But uh, that'll, that's still uh, up in the air a little bit. But it's a, it's a realistic target. Uh, to be able to have it by the end of March, early April. And after the Mass now today, I'll expose the Blessed Sacrament once again, and there'll be a wee blessing before the Blessed Sacrament, and then the opportunity to receive a blessing with the laying on of hands before the Blessed Sacrament. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. We're just conscious now that we're in the presence of the Lord, Jesus before us, Jesus within us. I had promised earlier that we'd have the blessing of religious objects. Some people have brought religious objects with them, and uh, we'll have, I had meant to do it during the Mass, but I think it'll work out now okay as well. <coughs> Lord Jesus, we call forth your blessing upon every religious object that people have here this day. Lord Jesus, we desire to come against all the works of the evil one. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to give those religious objects power, power against the forces of evil. We pray, Lord Jesus, that nothing of the occult will be able to take place in the presence of those religious objects. We ask this, Lord Jesus. We ask this, knowing that it's only possible by your power, that nothing of the occult and nothing of the evil one will be able to stand in the presence of those religious objects. And we pray, Lord Jesus, for the books and booklets and CDs. Lord Send your Holy Spirit. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, upon each of those books and CDs. And we pray indeed, Lord Jesus, that when people come in here to God's cottage, that you will guide them to the books that are most likely to inspire them. O oh, Holy Spirit, if any, when anybody comes in here, to God's cottage. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will guide their steps to the book that can most impact upon them. And we call forth your blessing upon all these religious objects. We ask your Lord to bless them for the purposes for which they are being brought. And we ask you to bless the people who will receive them. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was listening to a CD recently. Um, a lady who grew up an atheist. And um, then at a certain si a stage after our first child was born, there was 
just a question came into our heart, well, could there possibly be a God? And she sort of said, if you're up there, whoever you are, let me know, and got no reply for a few months. <laughs> and then she walked into a bookshop, a secular bookshop. And when she walked into the, the book, uh, bookshop, it was as if a light came upon one of the books and far away from her. And she found herself being led over to this book that the light was around. And she picked it up and it was the proofs for the existence of Jesus or the proofs for the resurrection of Jesus, one or the other, something like that. And through it, as she was converted and gradually she eventually herself and her husband became Catholics. So that's why I pray now that when people come in here to God's cottage, Lord, that you may lead them, that you may lead them. But here today, once again, whatever prayer is in your heart, I invite you to hold it before Jesus. Lord Jesus, you alone have the power. You alone have the power, Lord Jesus. Say the word and we will be healed. Say the word, Lord Jesus, and we will be healed. And we ask you now to say that word as I impart a blessing with the blessed sacrament. Lord Jesus, I pray that, as I pray over people here this day, you're the only healer here today, Lord Jesus. I ask you to take my words by the power of your Holy Spirit and bring them to life. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that as I bless people, as I pray over people, that it is your power that will go right through them. Lord Jesus, let your healing power flow right through me. Together. Lord Jesus, let your healing power flow right through me. We hold afternoons for healing in God's cottage a few times a year. Occasionally there's a full day. Groups are also welcome to request that an hour for healing, similar to what is on this video, be included in their pilgrimage to Glendalough. While once a month there is a Mass for healing, most often it is on the first Wednesday of the month at 7.30 with confessions beforehand, but occasionally the date is changed. At the end, there is always an opportunity to receive a quick blessing before the Blessed Sacrament with the laying on of hands.